Good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, again June 21st, uh, 2023. Um, I'm doing a second, inter uh, well, a second uh, video today. I just finished interviewing uh, Shay this morning again, and I was particularly interested in um, revisiting uh, Shay and having another video done with her because after the last couple of videos I did with her, I found out that she had the social work degree. And I thought it was extremely important to explain to people how even though she is has cerebral palsy, she's in a wheelchair, uh, physically she's not in good shape in a way, but she's in still in really good shape. She's still a young person and she's partially blind. But look what she did. She's gone out and she's got a social work degree. And she'd like nothing better to work. Why can she not work? So I had her explain some of the problems that she's been facing. But uh, I also want to go on today. I did mention in it, in the interview that I just did with Shay, how my uh, brother was born with spina bifida. And I think I like to tell his story about how far he went being a person who was handicapped physically. But he had the brains and my mother knew it. Now my mother... Uh, had him, and this is interesting because he was born uh, on a very special day for the world, which was May 6th, 1945, the day the Second World War was officially declared open, over, um, pardon me, and uh, it was uh, a day which she didn't know what it, whether to cry or laugh, because she was so excited because um, three of my uncles were making it back in the war, I lost two in the war, and at the same time she just gave birth to this beautiful little baby boy, who unfortunately, uh, when after he came out, uh, they found out that he has spina bifida. Now, for those who do not know what spina bifida is, uh, it's something related, I think, to cerebral palsy type of thing. But it's um, where he was born, he was seven pounds. Now, two pounds of that was a growth on, on his spine, which was jutting out, of course, from his back. And they had to remove it. And, of course, he was left partially paralyzed from the waist down. And at that time, the doctors told my mother that he wasn't going to live more than maybe about three weeks, if that. Now, my mother, of course, as in other videos I've told you, was a registered nurse. She was determined this little guy was going to make it. And so she worked hard with him. And what she did was just absolutely amazing. I've got to tell you this story because uh, what she's done to help other people as well as what how my brother turned out and uh, <clears throat> okay he um he was the first person uh to well my mother was actually the first person to really fight for the handicapped children to get them into our public schools now she uh, got him into school uh they didn't have diapers back in those days that were big enough for children so uh she used to cut up flannelette sheets for diapers uh she also those who, in my age bracket, up and around the 70s, or maybe a little younger, may remember um, the uh, uh, rubber pants with the snaps up the side. My mother was the one that invented those, and she had to get them specially ordered through the Red Cross, and then later she gave them over to the Red Cross. So it was really um, a wonderful thing that she invented these, but with the um, diapers, I remember when my... Um, when uh, they had the, just the wash tubs, you know, the, the scrub brush the, where you had to really go scrub everything. She used to wash that day in and day out on the scrub board. And then, of course, when the first ring of washers came out, I used to st stand there and help her with the diapers and with the laundry and help her uh, hold them up uh, and give them the diapers to her while she was hanging them up on the line. So this is one of the things. And then she fought to keep them in school. Because she knew that he had the brains. Like, Shay's definitely got the brains. But she's trapped in that wheelchair most of the time. So, anyhow, he ended up, she got him through school. He uh, ended up getting his uh, degree in biochemistry at Algonquin College here in Ottawa. Uh, he went to work for Health Welfare Canada uh, with a, um, in, the la in their labs. And there was something in the at the time, and this was in the early 70s, that was um, in meat that was causing cancer. He uh, and another uh, uh, doctor at the time uh, discovered a way of re um, getting it out of the meat without it harming the meat. So he was written up worldwide with the doctor 
for helping to uh, remove this out of the meat. Uh, he was also the first person in Ontario to get a private pilot's license with having spina bifida. He was also the first person in Ontario to be on the ski patrol even. He was skiing. And that was difficult because I can remember being, when he was, when I was a child and he was eight years older than me, but I can remember him being, coming back from the hospital, being operated on and where he had, um, because he was partially paralyzed from waist down and his feet were turned in to straighten them out, they had to put these steel rods in his uh, toes. So they were sticking out probably about an inch or so, uh, from his toes. And my mother told them, don't give him any 222s, he's allergic to them. So to give you an idea what happened, he rolled over in the middle of the night and he rammed his feet into the wall and he pushed those steel rods right back into his feet and couldn't feel a thing because of the paralysis. Um, he um, ended up going through Health Canada. He uh, ended up going into a management position at Health Canada later in life. Uh, before he actually retired at the early at the age of 55, he'd worked his way through and up to the top in Health Canada. And any drug coming out in the Canadian market because of his biochemistry background and that had to be approved and signed by him before it was even sold on the Canadian market. So here is a success story. This is why I cannot understand why we cannot make uh, changes and to help these people. Because a lot of them, like Shay, do want to be productive in our society. My brother turned out to be very productive. Uh, then later in life, uh, he had to have a sack on for his urine because he couldn't hold it. Uh, I can remember as a child, uh, his bowel movements would be found on the stairwell. I'd have to get him to clean up because, again, he was partially paralyzed. So he had those problems. He beat those problems. Then, again, later in life, he had a bad infection in his foot. Uh, the first time he beat it, the second time, uh, a number of years ago, probably around 10 years ago, he had another infection, and this time they had to amputate uh, his uh, leg below the knee. And again, he had a prosthetic. He was doing extremely well with the prosthetic. And then, like myself, who ended up with an infection this winter, to start going through my body, he also got an infection before I did and landed in the hospital. And it whipped through his body extremely badly. And um, he ended up, uh, now he's uh, totally paralyzed. He's bedridden or in a wheelchair. And they, of course, they had to get a special wheelchair made for him as well. So that took some time. But he was doing extremely well with the prosthetic. and uh, this. But he's never given up. And here he is. He's For a little guy that wasn't supposed to uh, live more than uh, three weeks, here he is, 78 years old, and he's still alive and kicking, even though things are different for him today in a wheelchair or in a scooter. But he's still getting around, and he's still doing great. So why can we not make provisions? Why can we not change rules and laws and whatever we have to do? Because there's so many people that really want to be productive. They don't want to be a burden on society. Shay doesn't want to be a burden. And uh, in fact, when uh, it was interesting, when I closed off the camera again, I found out from Shay that what she's hoping to do uh, a little later is she'd like to go back to school and get something um, in a mental health certificate as well to help people. You know, and there's no reason why she can't go back to school, get something in that too, and then work productively in her society and help people like herself. And I think um, this is unfair. It's like we're having very important people falling through the cracks. And, and as I was saying with all our inventions, and I was trying to say technology, but I had a little brain fog at that moment <laughs> on the camera. But it was what I was trying to say. I mean, we have people in wheelchairs that can talk through computers and everything else. Surely we can come up with um, situations and places that they can be placed. Because right now we certainly have a manpower shortage at the same time since the pandemic. So let's hope that we can all get together, work together, change the laws, do whatever we have to do, change the building layout or whatever, build ramps. And hopefully we have employees that can possibly out there that can see the benefit of this and see what we can come up with and put our heads together. So this is what I wanted to talk to you a little bit about today. And um, I may have another video because I'm not in the greatest shape either. But uh, I love to 
give good good reports and positive things on people. And of course, there again, the other thing about Shay was, of course, you heard that homeless person again demanding food from her. Well, this again is some of the bullying that I've been talking about. But they do have a tendency on the homeless that they want to pounce on the most vulnerable to get what they want. So that I'm glad Shay also brought up today in the video. So again, have a nice day and we will talk to you again soon. And bye-bye and take care.